Why, hello YouTube, greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow to another Machine Tech Review, this time for another Creality product, this one being the Creality Falcon 2. The Creality Falcon 2 doesn't fall under my usual additive manufacturing content, like filament printers or resin printers, manufacturing where you're adding material. No, the Falcon falls under subtractive manufacturing, where you buy your material and then you take away from it. That's the most basic description anyway, as today we're looking at a 40 watt diode laser engraver from Creality. Unboxing the Falcon 2 is really, really easy. It's literally just pop open the box and the machine is more or less ready to go. You pop on some feet, you put the laser head into its mount, plug in the air assist pump and the corresponding hosing and you're good to go. Or at least you would be if you had somewhere to interface with the machine. Which, I mean, you've got these buttons, but that's kind of it. Yes, unlike its Ender siblings, the Falcon is your basic CNC laser cutter. However, that's not to say there's no user input on the machine. Most machines of this type you actually have to have constantly connected to your computer to run through unbundled software. Whereas in this case, the Falcon does come with an SD card reader. It can only print whatever job was uploaded to it last, unlike the selectability of a 3D printer. So that's less than stellar, but on the plus side, allowing an SD card to be read at all has given them the opportunity to design in a frame button. This button will read your G code from the card and then trace out the printer for your file so that you know exactly where to place your material for cutting. Neat. Other features of this particular machine include six points of safety, including anti-tilt detection, in case the machine happens to fall off your table, a three-point alert system telling you whether or not there's air running to the head, or whether or not the lens needs a good clean, or if it's detecting fire, which we're dealing with eight five-watt lasers focused onto a single point. It's bound to happen if we're not careful. So far in my experience, it will flash red if it starts to detect a possible fire, but since nothing has caught flame yet, it hasn't stopped. I'm told it will if there's an actual fire detected, but either way, it's nice to be given that visual warning that it may be happening soon just to keep an eye on it. If it does, though, the machine has a built-in emergency stop to completely kill power instead of fumbling for a switch, which is super appreciated, as well as a keyed-out lock system to prevent unauthorized use. That is also super appreciated. So, with all the technical bits out of the way, a good question might be, what does a laser engraver actually do? Or, more accurately in my case, my question was when I received the machine, what can I do with it? Well, a lot of things apparently. I still haven't fully explored the full capabilities of this machine, but I certainly intend to. So far I've found its best use is working with wood, and they went ahead and included several test pieces of balsa wood so that I could experiment with it. Experiments like engraving this picture with my girls just before we boarded a train earlier this year, and then subsequently cut that out. Or using the machine to engrave my logo as designed by Paula Gase on press board and cut out the negative spots. For feature reference, I don't recommend using this particular material. It created more soot than anything, but I will admit the result is kind of cool. I made these little cat cutouts for my daughters, and they love playing with them. To cut them out took like 50 seconds, so if I really wanted to, I could cut out a whole fleet of these cats and turn them into crazy wooden cat ladies who own too many for their own good. The possibilities are endless. The documentation for this machine also says that it can cut black acrylic as well as 1 16th inch stainless steel. I haven't tried that yet as samples of that material weren't included, but I am eager to try, at the very least, the stainless steel for an upcoming project as well as their other advertised use, that being varying the intensity of the beam to discolor the metal to specified colors. If I ever get to do something like that with it, I'll definitely be making a follow-up video for this machine. However, 2D objects aren't the only thing that this thing can do. Using Creality's rotary tool, we can also engrave cylindrical objects, which sounds great on paper. However, getting this thing set up wasn't as clear-cut and dry as running the machine outright was. To get this set up, first thing you need to do is unplug the stepper motor from the Y-axis and plug it into the rotary tool. From there, you need to do all the mechanical setup, like installing feet risers and adjusting the rotary tool width to best suit what you need, etc, etc. In my case, I was engraving glass, so I also needed to prep the surface to be able to accept the diode laser, which for this I used cheap acrylic paint. From there, software issues. So for running rotary objects, there's obviously no stop switch for homing, so for something like this, it's most convenient to run from a computer. In my case, I didn't have a 15-foot micro USB cable, so that was out of the question. In addition to that, I'm not sure if it's the stepper motors of the rotary tool not rotating the same amount as the Y-axis of the machine, or if it's my fault for programming it weird, or whatever, but I found that by default, all my designs would come out elongated. I calibrated this out by designing a host of squares and then printing it on a test piece of glass, and the math of which came out to having to reduce the width to 75% of its original size to get it all properly working. 
Also, because of my cabling issues and not having a laptop present, having to manually press the stop switch during the initial homing process was also required. After a few runs, I got the rhythm of it pretty good, and it was no longer an issue. This last part isn't a fault of the machine in any way, as it's super recommended again that you tether it to your computer to do your rotary tool, I'm just outlining a quick workaround. And anyway, with all that figured out, it actually produced some nice results and I was able to engrave some wine glasses for a relative of mine in her wedding, so that's pretty handy. Now a major thing about what this machine is actually doing is using its laser to physically burn away material. As you can imagine, doing something like that would cause a lot of smoke, and with smoke comes fumes. So Creality offers an add-on to sort of deal with that. This is the enclosure they included as well. It goes together with fiberglass rods and plastic joiners with a canvas that zips together over top, and for all intents and purposes, it's pretty good. It's not 100% airtight at the bottom, but then again you don't exactly need it to be, because the air has to come from somewhere. It also features pockets for tools, velcro flaps for exhaust ports, and rubber entry ports to run cables in addition to a zip-up orange shielding viewing area to be able to monitor it all, which is pretty nice. Finally, it comes with a USB-powered computer fan and a 4-inch dryer vent duct. And, uh, yeah, this part I would say definitely upgrade on your own time, as even when I had the enclosure fully zipped up and the ducting routed out a window, the fan just wasn't powerful enough to grab all of the fumes and suck them out. Thankfully, I already have 6-inch ducting at home, as well as an exhaust fan for that when running my resin printer for the last year and a half, so I'm already set up in that regard. All I need to do is print a 4-inch to 6-inch dryer duct adapter and connect that to a window and I should be ready to go. And if anything, having two fans that both run out the window should only increase the ventilation power, so there we go. And as an added bonus, I was able to cut some half inch plywood and make a ventilation adapter for my window, which given I don't have a table saw readily at my disposal, it was really nice to have something that perfectly cut straight lines, and definitely an upgrade from the cardboard and 3D printed parts I was using before for the resin printers. So anyway, that was the Falcon 2. I feel like I've only scratched the surface of what I can do with this machine, as for the most part, aside from cutting out parts to augment this machine, I've only used it so far for decorative purposes, and my main concern is seeing what this can do for me in a practical sense, but that's probably going to have to wait for a follow-up video after I have some more experience with this machine. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow.